children, welcome back to Vistas Learning. I am Soma Pal, your Revious teacher. We Learning platform is an online platform who brings quality education for all of you. So let's start with today's session that is Animal Kingdom. Do you remember last, what did we do in our last session? Let's recap. We did types of animals. That was domestic animals. Can you name one domestic animal? Right, cow and wild animals. Quickly tell me a name of the wild animals. Yes, tiger. Then the examples of domestic animals and we saw a few examples of wild animals. Then we also saw what do animals eat? It depends on the type of food. Some animals eat plants and seed and they are called herbivores. Quickly give me an example. Right, goat. Meat eating animals are called carnivores, right. An example, lion, ant. The animals that eat both plants and animals are called omnivores, right. And a quick example, yes, human, that's us. All right. So after this, let's continue with our class with the next topic. That is, we are going to study the classification of animals. Animals are divided into various categories depending on their habitat. That means where can they live? So to start with mammals, reptiles, aquatic, amphibians, arboreal and aerial. So let's look into each individually. Mammals. What do you mean by mammals? The animals that gives birth to young ones and it takes care of their babies. Do you know the examples of it? Yes, the first thing is humans, right? Our mother gives birth to us and she takes care of us, doesn't she? Yes, so there are many other animals in the ecosystem. For example, whale is a mammal and the elephant. Can you see the baby? Yes, the elephant is also a mammal and there are many more in this category. The second one is the reptiles. So what are the features of reptiles? Have you seen a reptile that crawls on the ground and some crawls on the wall? Their body is covered with dry scales. If you have observed, their scales are very dry. But there's an exception. They always lay eggs. They don't give birth to young ones. The first reptile we all know is snakes, right? It slithers around the ground. Then the lizard, there are many types of lizards. You must have seen the wall lizard, right? In the house, I'm very scared of those. I'm very scared of reptiles. Crocodile, oh my God. It is also a reptile, it crawls, right? Yes. So after reptiles, it is aquatic animals. As the name suggests, aqua means water. The animals that live in water are called aquatic animals. And they have a special structure from where they breed. Breed in water? Yes. They 
breathe oxygen that is present in the water and through gills it is a special organ they have the examples of few aquatic animals is fish you all know that then turtle have you seen a turtle you must have then octopus ooh octo means eight legs octa it's octopus can i tell you a fun fact of octopus how many hearts do we have think one right we have one heart but an octopus has three hearts can you imagine that wow okay so let's come to the other category these are the amphibians animals that live in water and can live on land are called amphibians they are cold blooded animal the first one is the example is frog you all must have seen a frog it hops from one place to another and you are the frogs are mostly seen in the rainy season isn't it you must have hear them croaking and jumping and hopping around yeah and the second one is salamander salamander is an other type of lizard that stays near the water then is the toad you see this grumpy toad yes it resembles very much like a frog but it is different aerial animals what do you mean by aerial animals yes aerial means from top right so the animal that spend most of the time in the sky which animals spend their time in sky yeah birds you got it so animals that spend most of their time in air are called aerial animals and their body is covered with feathers to make it a flight or then the body is very light so that they can have a high flight right they can fly up high so the birds are a good example of aerial animals now what do you mean by arboreal animals as you can see the trees the animals that live on trees a very good example is the monkeys do we live on trees well we can live only if we have a tree house otherwise we can't live on branches isn't it okay an other animal that lives on trees is the squirrel can you see the squirrel yes it's a little squirrel that is up on the tree all right so we have finished all the animals that are placed in the animal kingdom now let's see how are humans different from animals we are also considered as animals right but we are different how in few things are first how many legs do we have two isn't it do we walk with our hands and legs no but yes you have seen a baby crawling they crawl like a animal right they are all on their four legs we say hands and legs but sooner when they develop their locomotion their movement they stand on their feet that is when they start running and moving with their feet so the humans walk on two legs whereas the animals walk mostly on four legs can you see this lion walking on four legs right and the men are walking on their two legs 
Then the second one is humans are mostly omnivorous and animals can be herbivores, can be carnivores or can be omnivores. So it differs in animals. Now humans are very adaptive in nature. Wherever you go, they will adapt according to their surrounding. If at all I'm staying in a North Pole well full of snow, I will wear all the jackets and lit a fire, a campfire and stay there. But an animal can't be so adaptive quickly. They can't adapt quickly, but humans can adapt quickly. So this is the difference and humans can be adaptive in nature and animals cannot adapt to the nature quickly. There are many other reasons that you will be learning as you grow. Now, here are a few examples from your textbook. Your textbook has these examples. Who am I? It's a riddle. Are you good at riddles? I'm sure you are. So let's see if you can answer this. The first one, I have colorful feathers. I am the village clock. What does the clock do? Animals as clock. What does this refer to? Okay, so morning when we have to wake up, what does our mama put on in the clock? Right. Alarm, right? If you have to wake up at 5 in the morning, you just can't wake up. You have to put an alarm. So here it is. This animal helps the villagers to wake up or it shouts. Do you want a clue? The animal shouts, cock a doodle do. Which animal sounds like that? Quickly. It's a rooster, right? Can you see its colorful feathers? It looks beautiful and it shouts in the morning, cock a doodle do, and everyone hears that and everyone shows that it's morning, right? Now, the second one, I climb the top of the tree where no one can climb. I eat fruits. Can you climb a tree quickly? I'm sure you can only with practice, but this animal is a pro in it. It can climb very quickly and eats only fruits. Can you live on only fruits? No, we want spicy, we want tasty food, right? Quickly, I want the answer for this. Yes, it is monkey. Now the last one, I have a very small, smart body, long ears and small whiskers. I hop swiftly. What animal is that? It looks very cute. Anyone? Yes, you got it right. It's the rabbit. It's also called bunny. Okay, here. Our next topic is, how are animals useful to us? In last class, I have spoke about the domestic animals, isn't it? And how are the animals useful to us? We will see in this session. So you can see these are also our domestic animals who lives with us and can be helpful in various ways. So the first one is the cow. What do we get from cow? Cow gives us milk, right? And how do we use that milk? Yes, we drink it to become strong. And the paneer that we eat Yummy paneer, the palak paneer, mummy makes the malai paneer. From where does it come? It comes from milk, which we get from cow. Right. And butter? Yes. 
cow gives us milk, from there we make butter. All right, you must be knowing this, right? And you can see this is a hen. What does hen gives us? An egg, right? Eggs are very nutritious and it says that if you have an egg a day, you can keep the doctors away, isn't it? How does the egg look? It is oval in shape. So hen gives us eggs. Okay, let's look into this third example. Let me zoom in for you. Okay, what is this? Zzz, it makes and it lives in a hive, a black hive you must have seen on tall buildings, right? It's a bee. What do we get from bee? What is the name of the bee? How do we call them? Yes, honeybees. So the, as the name says, honeybees gives us honey, which is again very healthy. So here in this, the honeybee is collecting the nectar from the flower and it takes to its hive and then stores it. There are thousands of bees that work very hard to collect the nectar and put it in the hive. Got it? Okay. So how do they make honeybees? I'm going to teach you in the next lesson. All right, so let's see the last example. Which animal is this? It's a sheep. What do we get from sheep? Yes, when we feel cold in winter, what do we wear? We wear sweaters, right? And the sweater is made from wool. You see this colorful wool, right? But it doesn't come colored, it is processed, it's a later stage. First, it, the wool has come from the skin of the sheep, okay? So this all the process, how it comes, the wool, that you will be learning in later stages. All right, so here we saw how are animals useful to us. You will remember it, right? Okay, let's move on. We all live in houses, so do the animals. So where do animals live? Different animals have different homes. So let's see few. What is the first one? The first animal that we see, it's a bear. And what is the structure that you see? It's a cave. What are the other animals that lives in cave? Yes, tiger and oh, lion. Yes, so animals like lion, tiger, bear lives in cave. Now, oh, this is so cute. What is this? It's a hole in the ground. It's called burrow. Which animal lives in burrow? Yes? Rabbit, yes. And what are the other animals that lives in burrow? S snake, yes. Okay, the other one. Can you see the animals in the structure? Which animal is this? And what is the structure called? It is called shed. It is shed, right? With wooden bars and it is covered with haze, dry straws. Okay? So it is the shed. And who lives in shed? There's the cows and horses. All right? Okay. See this, chickens inside a netted house, it is called 
coop. This house structure is called coop. And who lives in this? Chickens live in this and also turkeys. You must have seen turkeys. Those are little bigger birds. It exactly looks like chicken, but it is bigger in size. Okay. So now next, there are some facts that is mentioned in your textbook. Let us go through this fun facts together. Do you know this? The tiger is the national animal, I'm sure you know this, of India. Nowadays, the number of tigers is decreasing. How? The people are hunting them. For what? They are hunting them to sell their skin to other countries, which is not good at all. So the tigers are increasing in number. The Project Tiger, a project of the government of India, is to preserve tigers, that is to save them. We have to save the cats. They are the beautiful cats, but they are dangerous too. Have you seen in the news channel or some videos, the tigers are also kept as pets, which is not good at all, because the tiger's habitat is to stay in forest, in open space, to keep them caged in our house, which is just not acceptable. Right? So children, you have to tell everyone about this. In fact, you have to know about this. The tiger, you have to preserve them. Okay. The next one is the number of insects is very large in the animal kingdom. Yeah. There are number of insects. Many, many insects. I don't know the names of all the insects. But how much animals we have in the animal kingdom? It is more than that. The number of insects are more than the animals in animal kingdom. Now the third fact is a cheetah runs at 100 km per hour. Can you ever imagine that? Who runs? Can a human run? Why does it run so fast? What is this? Why does, what is the adaptive nature for that? Yes, to catch its food, to catch its prey. So quickly when he sees a prey, he runs so fast that the prey doesn't have the time to think and he catches it. For what? For eating, of course. So cheetah is a carnivorous, eats meat, right? The blue whale, you know the whale, right? Is it? What was it? It is a mammal, right? And it's also an aquatic animal because it stays in water. So the blue whale, which is 33 meter long, is the biggest animal in the animal kingdom. So can you imagine how big is it? I don't know. It can be very big. We have to see it by our eyes to believe it. All right. So let's read the next one. Some animals like chameleon and leaf insects change their color to suit their environment to protect themselves from enemies. So what is this nature called? They have a specific term. Does anyone know it? Yes, camouflage. They camouflage themselves to the object they are sitting on it to protect them from their enemies. So if, they can, if they're sitting on a leaf, they change to green color. Or if they're sitting on an orange object, they change to orange color. Brilliant, very good. So in this way, they save themselves from getting eaten up. Can we do that? No, we can't. All right, so what did we learn today? Do you remember? Let's see. Classification of animals, which are mammals, reptiles, 
aquatic, amphibians, aerial, and arboreal. You remember the names, right? The examples of the each category? Yes, mammals can be human, reptiles can be snake, aquatic, fishes, amphibians, frog, aerial, birds, arboreal, monkey, right? Next, we saw is how are humans different from animals? Then, we saw few examples from our textbook. We solved the riddle, didn't we? Then, how are animals useful to us? We saw the various products that animals provide us. And lastly, where do animals live? We saw few of the animals and their houses. In the next lesson, we are going to start with chapter number two. That is honey, sweet honey. As I told you earlier, right? Honeys, we are benefited from them as they give us honey. So in the next chapter, we will learn more about the honeybees. How do they collect the honeys and how do they store them and how are the honey extracted from this hives. So let's meet in the next class to start with this new chapter. Until then, you please go through your textbook and read and see these classes and try to understand. If you're having any problem, please put it in the comment box and I shall do a quick recap with you. Thank you so much for watching me and you take care of yourself and I shall meet you quickly in my next session. Bye-bye from Soma, ma'am.